Hello and thanks for joining us. Coming up on today's show. Food for art. The Spanish artist's favourite foods and restaurants sizzle at a new show. I go along to Barcelona's Picasso Museum. Kenyan filmmakers rise up against 1960s restrictions that they say are stifling their film industry. Love in Paris is ten times stronger than anywhere else. And from best-selling French novel to Hollywood film, The Extraordinary Journey of the Fakir. You have to test the living room before buying them. He was born in the southern Spanish city of Malaga. He spent most of his life in Paris. But Pablo Picasso often referred to Barcelona as his true home. The city's Picasso Museum houses the most important collection of his early work in the world. I went along to Barcelona to visit a new exhibition exploring the artist's relationship with food. <laughs> Gastronomic journey through art with Picasso in Barcelona. What could be more sumptuous? The exhibition Picasso's Kitchen brings together 200 of his works. Let's go and take a look. It's like an enormous tasting menu. Nine different rooms sizzling with Picassos. The stars of the show, the kitchen, utensils and food. Picasso, from the time of his studies until the end of his life, painted in the Spanish tradition, still life with fruit and vegetables. He painted the kitchen space, which to him was like an artist's workshop. A bottle of wine, a colander in the place of a woman's head, and a roast chicken. Everyday objects depicted by Picasso as disfigured art in his Cubist style. And the artist's favorite restaurants, such as the Cat Gat in Barcelona. There, bohemian artists met to discuss art, politics, and literature. He'd have lunch and dine with his friends who are poets and painters from Spain and France, such as Paul Eluard, Michel Leris, Jean Junier, and lots of others at the restaurant called The Catalan. And often, he didn't pay his bill, did he? It was part of the Picasso myth. There's a legend that Picasso's signature is worth much more than a restaurant bill. Whether this is true or not, either way, the legend is rather nice. Food played a role throughout Picasso's life, serving as a source of inspiration, torment, and escape. Picasso said it took him years to be able to draw like a child. And here is a portrait of a child, where you see his private parts, you see ceramics, and he's holding a lobster in his hand, which no doubt was something you could not find easily under Nazi occupation in Paris. Picasso was very passionate about ceramics. He reinvented it. Ceramics is also a metaphor for the kitchen, because to make ceramics, you need an oven, like when you cook. Ceramics are also used for cooking and for eating with. Often the drawings on the ceramics were food items. Fish, there's eggs, a Spanish sausage. All this in the style of Bernard Palissy, where these plates are textured, 3D. These are not plates for eating off. The 
Sebastian Picasso's kitchen is on until the end of September. Art and food, a very appetizing combination for any visit to Barcelona. Next, Kenyan filmmakers are urging authorities to revamp a 1960s law that they say is stifling their resurgent industry. Directors and producers poured onto social media this week to protest after the regulator printed adverts in newspapers reminding them of the need to pay for a license or face jail. It comes after the lesbian love story Rafiki was banned in the country just before it premiered at the Cannes Film Festival. Shona Bhattacharya reports. Kenyan critics are praising this R-rated romantic comedy, calling it funny, sharp and innovative. But for directors, innovating is no easy feat. In Kenya, movies must go through the Film Classification Board. This government body recently reminded the industry of its presence and threatened to punish those filmmakers who failed to pay the mandatory license fee before a shoot. A rule dating back more than half a century and that the director of Disconnect says is out of date. You know, that young uh, upcoming kid wants to make a film with his phone. Let him be free to go shoot even in the city, you know. Let them have the, 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 the liberty to film their own country, not charging them or restricting them. He is not the only industry actor accusing the government of limiting freedom of expression. But for the Film Classification Board, it's simply an issue of applying a 1963 law. And it's not because we want to criminalize creativity. It's because there are bad apples within the industry. There are people operating without filming licenses. And we cannot have an even, an even play, playing ground where some people have filming licenses and others do not have. The timing of the board's reminder comes weeks after it banned a film called Rafiki. Despite being selected by the Cannes Film Festival, a first for Kenya, this romance between two women is accused of promoting homosexuality, a crime in Kenya. The film's director is disappointed. Still, in an interview with France 24, she's hopeful for her country's future. Because we truly believe that we have a strong constitution that allows us the freedom of expression. And although our constitution is very, very young, it's only eight years old, we do have rights to express ourselves and we fully, fully believe in our constitutional rights as artists. Like Wanuri, Kenya's artists are counting on the growing film industry to push boundaries in this active East African country. You can watch the rest of my interview with the director of Rafiki, Winuri Kayu, um, on our website at france24.com. Next, inspired by the 2015 best-selling French novel that sold in 36 countries across the globe, The Extraordinary Journey of the Fakir has been turned into an English-language film. The comedy adventure is directed by Ken Scott and stars Bollywood favourite Danouche and French actress Berenice Bejo. Catalina Marchand de Abreu reports. Meet Aja, a street magician from Mumbai, who sets off on a mission to look for his missing father. The bad news came. I'm taking your mother to Paris. In Paris, he begins his adventure by falling in love in an IKEA store. I'll see you tomorrow at the Eiffel Tower. Okay. Oh, here in Paris, we do it on the cheeks. <laughs> he decides to spend the night there, sleeping inside a closet. To stay there for the night. That one. Aja unknowingly embarks on a journey to England. London? You all are illegal immigrants? And you are not? I'm a tourist. Traveling in a wardrobe. <laughs> Based on the 2014 French novel that sold millions of copies worldwide and translated into more than 30 languages, the film conserves the book's lighthearted nature and humor. You're a refugee? We are not in reality. We're a little above reality. It is very reminiscent of Jules Verne. We are there to travel, to dream. It is where cinema meets comics that meets cartoons. That's what we like when we take our children to see animated films. A French producer, a Canadian director and an international cast. 
The film portrays the struggles of immigrants. The author of the book drew his inspiration from his previous job as an immigration officer. I worked as an officer dismantling illegal immigration mafias, so I saw immigrants all day and would tell myself that if I was born in one of these countries under these circumstances, I might have done the same thing. It is really a humanist outlook on immigrants. Danush, the Indian actor who agreed to go on this adventure, is a huge star in his country. This is his first international film, bringing in his Bollywood moves to Europe, hoping that Fakir's strange journey will reach a wider global audience. We began this show at the Picasso Museum in Barcelona and we're going to end at the Picasso Museum in Paris. It's paying tribute to one of the artist's best-known masterpieces, Guernica. The exhibition proposes a lesson on the history of the anti-Franco, anti-fascist and pacifist symbol. It's on until the end of July. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter and Facebook. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. You are here, your program spotlighting French heritage. Versailles, the Louvre, Mont Saint-Michel are well-known stars of French heritage. But French genius and France harbors many other hidden treasures. The arts, gastronomy, architecture, as well as nature's wonders. Come along with France 24, discover France's living heritage. From young apprentices to accomplished craftsmen and farmers to Michelin star sporting chefs, meet these people whose passion for their professions preserve and drive French heritage. You are here on France 24 and France24.com.